what's up we're in the third part i really truly and like violently wanted that for my children yeah so i made observations of the much better place to grow up in and i wanted to leave the world but these people who are despisers of those who do good chose to like you know drag me behind i left the life yeah my uncle i left the life yeah my aunt the life of my mom and dad the life of these people that never give their lives to christ and so because they don't give their lives to samantha um they just keep living to bosh lives until they're old and i didn't want that but the world around me refused so just like uma thurman in kill bill i made that analogy in the earlier video just like uma in kill bill i discovered i was pregnant tantamount of pregnant something that made a woman that was an assassin decide to stop the life of an assassin and be a regular jane marrying some regular joe in some regular town when nobody like where everybody knows them everybody knows their names because it's like that tiny small town thing just go and get married and make yourself beatrix kiddo how about you just become beatrix kiddo and forget about being uh what was her assassin name you get my point yeah i wanted to be beatrix kiddo because i realized it made no sense at all to be anything but wanted to raise kids in a church and stuff wanted my kids to if they wanted you know join little pageants and so be trained to discipline and keeping themselves in a bunch and striving the thing about pageants is that they teach kids to um what do you call this to aspire for a lot of accolades and acquisitions because the more accolades and acquisitions you have the more regarded you are as a beauty queen they tend to get very educated they get um they keep themselves in a bunch they don't do random things on social media they don't upload videos where they're twerking do you understand they um they they develop talents singing dancing whatever so as to showcase it they do volunteer work they um uh do study at school they make sure that they do well because it it stands in their favor as beauty queens to be an academic to be accepted into you know the best universities in the country to be to be to be so frankly if i had followed the path of a beauty queen just like i joined miss miss uh, winchester ridge primary as a child um i probably would not have even hung out with some of the guy the women uh, you know that i hung out with some of the men that i hung out with i probably would not have given them too much of my time because i'm too busy trying to be ultimately become miss south africa like i'm literally trying to become miss south africa cannot be found and i can get busy got taboo kenwa like three shots of straw rum i cannot for crying out loud be found go zuleiki dancing on a car like drinking savannah take three in one sitting i can't i gotta be seen on campus at school Tansuki, i have to keep on being in the university library that's where i'm at i gotta study i gotta basically have a good answer to give when judges are asking me questions about what under heaven it is that i'm gonna do for the future i have got to be a good girl so if i had stayed in beauty pageants even though i might not have won some of them even though i might have come out disappointed in some of them i would have kept myself in a bunch for the sake of my career as a beauty queen and i would have graduated on time likely even gotten a scholarship to enter into university because i would have stayed like studying really hard increasing my grades making sure that i'm doing well and also making sure that i'm not just dating anybody that might just wreak havoc in my reputation i wouldn't have done that i wouldn't have done that some of the guys that i dated would never have gotten a shot with me if i was busy trying to be mr john if i was busy trying to be miss I get Zavi. Like whatever. Give me like Miss Johannesburg. If I was busy trying to be Miss South Africa, I would for the life of me, whether or not I won, I would have kept myself in a bunch. Irrespective of winning, I would have kept myself in a bunch. Beauty contests are of course um unfortunate in the sense that they can be immodest. Women's bodies. One minute. Women's bodies are just paraded, you know all up in everybody's grill at beauty pageants in a way that i find unfortunate they should be all dressed up the swimming costume component of them can go frankly because like proper what's going on over there yeah but that's like a christian perspective right but everything else about them you cannot throw out like proper cannot throw out the baby with the bath water over there uh, they are trained how to answer questions they're trained how to interview basically they, these women go through a lot okay just to become miss south africa and the thing that they go through keeps them in a bunch they tend to not be like everybody else all these other girls that are busy getting drunk in the club these aspiring beauty queens keep themselves out of the club they proper keep themselves out of the club so if i had done all that 
right if i had basically followed what i was supposed to follow i would not have made the mistakes i made in life and i would not now be dealing with such a shoddy horrific horrendous excellently catastrophic ex-boyfriends that i dated i would not have frequented the aisles of certain people i likely would not have even hung out all that much with my cousin yeah so uh, i probably would not be the bane or she would not be the bane of my existence and the center the central focus of her envy my older sister also wanted to do beauty pageants because she recognized the propelling power of beauty pageants i don't know what made my older sister decide not to go out like that but there was a time when my older sister was thoroughly investigating the prospect of joining miss south africa um i don't know what made her stop i don't know what made her decide not to but she wanted to become miss south africa and she could have if she wanted to right uh but she chose not to for the same reasons that i guess i'm explaining right now that beauty queens are trained a lot of discipline a lot a lot a lot of discipline and the country tends to also be very proud of them they're girls that get protected for crying out loud in a way that these men all over the show are not protecting everybody else so i would have been in the right space but sorry for you sorry for you garabo you decided to go and be a fool sister girl you decided to go and be a fool another thing about beauty pageant ladies they also like have to keep themselves in a bunch in terms of their bodies so i would have disciplined myself to also drain the gym young there was just so much you know that's the, the, the sad and disquieting thing about a mother that does not see uh, much in her own child uh my mom was was one of the biggest reasons why i did not do certain things in life because she never thought of me as beautiful uh if anything the only reason i even entered miss winchester ridge was because a teacher advised me to um but it was never my mom you know it was never my mom it was never anybody from home uh yeah but i guess postpartum depression will do that to a woman where you don't see value in your own girl child that's what's good yeah uh, so when I got to a certain age, I, I mean, I did not want, for crying out loud, uh, to just continue in the same grain. I'm a beautiful woman. I had already sort of kind of missed certain milestones in my life. I couldn't do certain things that I should have done anymore. But I was not about to allow my daughter to miss out on them too. So I wanted to give my kids the best shot, more life thing that I possibly could. I would have uh, not so much trained my kid to do beauty pageants because, uh, no, I wouldn't have gone out like that. I'm not a fan because of one, the immodesty. Secondly, it's a very, um, it's, it's terrible. Uh, some like it can create shallowness in women, but never mind shallowness. Uh, also, it can be uh, hugely competitive. If she wanted to, I wouldn't mind, but. I'm not, I don't, I mean, God definitely does not want women prancing around in bikinis all over the show. So that's like a challenge for me. But what it is that beauty pageants have produced in some of the women in this world, in this country, guys, is astronomical. I mean, only just look at Basitana, Basitani, Kumal, uh, what it is that she became because of having one Miss South Africa. Or yeah, Gimang, Peggy Sue is another one. All of these women that are now just these prolific business women, they were catapulted by the beauty, um in king of beauty by winning pageants karishni naika they won beauty pageants and that's why they got to where they got that's why they're still so popular but no miss universe is out here trying to like place men in that position they've apparently filed for bankruptcy guys for making a man win miss universe anyway whatever another story for another day that we're not currently discussing that particular point gets her all of this hair because i want my hair free from the bonds that I have subjugated it to for months on end. Anywho, anyhow, oh no, what is happening, Lana? Hey, 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 please just come out, ne? Don't make me have to cut this thing. Do I have to cut it? Do I have to cut it, yo? I don't think it's necessary, but we do not know. Oh, oh. Anywho, yeah, disciplined girls, there's a way to make your daughters disciplined uh, without shoving down a disciplinarian rod down their throat, without basically coercing them. You know, kids struggle very much with honoring uh, instructions because they are just born liars. We are born dead in trespasses and sins. They are also born rebellious, born dead in trespasses and sins. But I mean, when you keep on telling a little baby girl that she's a pretty girl in a pretty world, uh, she might not realize that you're actually trying to use uh, the, the pageantry industry <laughs> as a rod on her back. Um, yeah, they, there are just ways to discipline children in a way that they don't feel. Like joining extracurricular activities, giving them 
uh, what do you call this like sending them to dance lessons classes giving them a guitar giving them a piano like kids that are little musical proteges tend to not be in the club too much you know what i mean like kids that can sing really well and have youtube channels where they're busy out here doing covers tend to not be booty hopping on some dance floors every weekend there are ways to make sure that your girl don't get wayward without asking them not to get wayward you know you don't gotta say it because the moment you say it that's when they decide to rebel mm. just because they can top establishment thing mm. yeah i made those observations i became wise uh sort of or at least i sought after wisdom i recognized the value of wisdom and uh i sought it and Christ gave it to me but after I got born again then there was like this random rubbish where people were like not on my watch you little animal you crazy animal you insane animal you are not going to be holy all up in my grill you're not gonna do better Garabo. Mm -mm. your daughters are gonna be predictably just like you they are going to miss out on their pretty face they're not gonna win no pageants they're not gonna sing even even though they can they're not gonna win no competition they're not gonna do no youtube covers they're not gonna play no guitar they're not gonna play no piano your daughters ain't gonna do jack except just gather dust they will have a musical gift a musical talent they will have an appreciation for song but they will just keep on swaying left to right to other people's music and even then in a nightclub instead of actually in and of themselves making that music you see they they are uh what do you call this thing there are ways to raise children in discipline and kids that tend to be focused on their mu on their giftings uh, tend to get steer clear on the things that make a lot of kids get into trouble but later on in life there are issues with such children as well because they are the stars of the world uh, so you're dealing with a little bit of a Katy Perry they're the stars of the world right they are very talented they're very gifted they're very focused they are miss universe for crying out loud uh, guys please ignore my underarm here's and i don't have time to shave okay yeah they are miss universe and miss everything uh, so because these kids are as gifted as they are they are wanted by the world and so there is always a challenge that they might end up like katy perry in other words buzzle they're gonna just tarry away from what makes sense and that for me was where it is that the bible went came in teach a child in the way that he should go or she should go and when he's older he will not depart from it like raise a child in the admonition of the lord and raise them in the admonition of the lord and pray to god to keep that kid on the straight and narrow so they don't tarry away from him children raised in musical households tend to stay good up to a point when they're busy after getting scooped up by the entertainment industry that's the problem chloe and halle bailey were such good girls until they got taken up by hollywood Katy perry good girl till she got taken up by hollywood marina she was just greedy she was rapacious that's why she went awry beyonce uh and kelly and them good girls until they got taken up by the entertainment industry i mean to think Ugutu beyonce has slept with no one but jay-z i mean guys that makes her a cut above literally most of us do you understand and the thing that kept her like panties in a bunch and not sleeping with boys in her high school was the fact that she was too busy training practicing dancing do you understand so there is a way to keep girls and boys on the straight and narrow but you see it is these very talented girls and boys that are on the straight and narrow as kids that the devil corrupts later on but that is the environment or the ecosystem that comes in where you train a child like your kid must not tarry from god from jesus you gotta teach them that honey you got gifts you got talents you can sing but remember yours is to sing for the lord like instill the fear of the lord in the child so that if they pursue a career in music they can only do gospel or stay on youtube like there is this woman that is so violently gifted i am so in love with her music i am i'm busy like i keep like I, I, just now before i came to talk here i was listening to some songs of hers her name is um la ish where's ish okay my hands are all oily let me go to youtube uh latasha lee latasha lee right she is so talented she gives me that amy winehouse vibe and she however is not amy why because she stayed off the entertainment industry she has got a youtube channel she's doing music on youtube and that's where she's staying there's also another guy on youtube by the name of joseph solomon like insofar as you stay on youtube like chloe and Haley bailey if they had stayed on youtube they would have been able to maintain their virtue still make their millions still make lots of money still make good clean music um without really stumbling anybody but in the moment they got signed over to the entertainment industry that's when everything fell apart so these 
kids like should essentially just kind of stay off the entertainment industry i remember earlier when i was even listening to latasha lee thinking that thank god for youtube even though it's messing up with my particular life but the thing about youtube is that it enables regular janes and joes that are very gifted to not have to basically vie for the entertainment industry it makes very beautiful voices not have to sign their souls to the devil youtube enables the pianist kid to make a healthy living insofar as they're not greedy rapacious and hungry and thirsty for fame world fame they, they can make quite a handsome living on just youtube on just youtube because the moment they get taken up by mainstream media that's when they lose all virtue i mean just listen to like two seconds of this lady i don't want to be what do you call this i don't want to be copywritten so i think if i just take like 10 seconds of her music i'll be good listen okay her name is her name is latasha lee her music is just like i am obsessed i am addicted i am a fan I found her by mistake by happenstance and she's only on YouTube right um she has albums and stuff but she's not signed to anybody and that for me is uh, good why because she then is maintained she keeps herself healthy spiritually she keeps herself clean do you understand she keeps herself without having to sign any dirty contracts um and and therefore use your very excruciating talent uh, for the devil like there is absolutely no need for like all of this compromise in the music industry with uh, like hypersexuality and whatnot when you've got this kind of talent it's so I mean when you got that kind of talent when your voice sounds like that you don't need to be stripping down you don't need whatever but anyway whatever these are the things that i made an observation of when i was newly not newly saved but when i was about 25 ish you know i was kind of disillusioned i knew that i wanted more i coveted kids that grew up in churches like when i was uh, in in high school my friends all of them um ex yeah i used to go to church every sunday except one used to go to a jehovah's witness church but they went to churches nonetheless and um they had that camaraderie that friendship that extended fellowship with kids outside of school um they met other children that were also like-minded and I, I envied that i really really envied that i did not have any such a thing so i mean like eh, given that i get to make decisions as to how i'm gonna roll with my children i wanted kids growing up making friends out of children in the church and also uh, using their talents and i was also going to take my kids for training i've always wanted to know how to play the guitar i've always had a musical gift but never musical enablement right i've always just loved music that's what i'm trying to explain to you guys uh i even bought a guitar hoping to start to learn just before i got i lost my job i got fired for no cause so i was not able to take lessons um type thing i just have a guitar now it's just like chilling in storage uh even the strings have been removed yeah type thing but yeah i have a thing about the acoustic guitar next to a singing voice it's just beautiful like stuff like tori kelly type vibes like you will absolutely fall in love with that kind of talent but you see tori starts to fall apart when she joins hollywood that's the issue like tori kelly is like even a perfect example like a girl that it wasn't broken but then she fixed it tori kelly chloe and hilly bailey wasn't broken try to fix it because they allowed themselves to sign contracts with hollywood even though they had these massive youtube channels and they could have frankly just continued to make money healthily live a very healthy life you know above reproach without signing to the devil youtube enables that it enables that it is a platform where young talent old talent whatever talent can just put itself online and not have to sign some nefarious deal in order to make money plus everything is yours i mean i guess youtube gets a cut in that it's ad revenue and what have you but you don't have to sign contracts that linger into years with random nasties uh, that are thoroughly trying to steal your soul too trying to get you to take off your clothes trying to tell you i mean with chloe and Haley, it was not broken and they fixed it it was not broken and they fixed it, it it's just the worst thing and apparently they've been estranged those girls from their parents because of how licentious especially uh gimang heli has become chloe is it chloe no chloe is the one that's like all booty hopping and all over the show heli is the ethereal one with the little mermaid right yeah mm. uh yeah apparently they have been estranged from their parents because of how licentious they have uh, well especially the 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 the, the, um, the other one chloe 
has become yeah i wanted something like that for my children but without them compromising with the entertainment industry okay you can see that all of my hair now i'm going to moisturize it all of it in a bunch in a bunch my hair is not matted not as much anyway this is all for the best look at how nicely black it is i did wash this hair on my uh, on like uh gingy tuesday guys it's saturday now so i don't wash my hair every week or even every day it's just not something that happens in the black community just in case you were wondering um so like yeah don't come at me with a flying kick we don't do flying kicks we just do excellence okay cool yeah guys yeah, yeah. so chloe not chloe sorry never mind chloe but uh, me over here karazi karazishis when i got to a certain age i wanted more I wanted more. I knew that what I was living was kind of empty. If anything, I was already thinking these things when I was dating my ex already. But by then, by the time that I was thinking these things extra deep, we had broken up. So now he was no longer even part of the discussion. The narrative was changing in my life. And then upon giving this life of mine over to Jesus interrogations, Jesus wonderings, Jesus concerns, Jesus curiosities. That's when everybody was like, ah, and they started to like gnash their teeth at me. Like, Papa, out here growling. Hey, Batum. Randoms out here sounding like zombies. Uh, over my dead body. I went on right ahead and I gave my life to Christ anyway, despite them growling. Because uh, I wanted more. I mean, and I wanted to turn that we're going to be Miss Universe. Uh, and then like just like put on some clothes already like stop it type thing uh, and stop with the bikini type establishment thing but my kids never got to be Mr. John, Miss High School, Miss Neighborhood Community my daughters never got to be disciplined by pageants my daughters never got to be disciplined by the guitar by draining the orchestra my children never got to be disciplined by a music teacher that absolutely adores them my children never got to do any of that because my children never got to be born sure as of satan hey guys Bills above. What did I ever do to deserve your bills above other than want Jesus? That's just the thing. Last day's conglomerate. Out here rolling around in these uneasy, uncomfortable streets, thoroughly thwarting people's dreams, making themselves little nightmares in innocent's lives. It's like as in, do you? Mark yourself a hochaiki. Do that, ne? But understand, okay, language seven is a forinuela going forward. Understand that this activity of yours of making yourselves hochaikis at the expense of innocent souls. God Almighty is a corrector, is a fixer, and he will have nothing to do with all this coercion. I had a dream, you guys, where these hochaikis, I saw a few of them in the entertainment industry. And I will tell you exactly who I saw, ne? That, that were like hochaikis. And of course, this is not the capacity of these people in waking life because they don't know me, I don't know them. That's what's good. I had a dream, ne? And God is, is is showing me these guys likely because of the fact that, uh, what is this? They started out really good in life because of their talents and their ambitions. You know, when, when kids are, uh, what do you call this? When kids are, are focused on getting somewhere, they tend to stay out of uh, trouble, a including artists in the entertainment industry. They tend to stay out of trouble like think about beyonce and kelly and basically those girls but destiny's child they stayed out of trouble they were good girls in comparison to all the other girls of their generation of their age group do you understand and then they join the entertainment industry and they become they they proliferate a message now that they're part of the entertainment industry that even they did not walk in even they did not do it like they did not act like such fools when they were kids because they were so focused on attending auditions they were so focused on getting the job the gig they were so focused on ultimately winning a, 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 a competition that they stayed on the straight and narrow and then once they are in the entertainment industry these unfortunate little lullabies okay i shall call them lullabies because they're properly like sleeping okay these un easy unfortunate lullabies of children become stars ne? they ultimately make it as celebrities and then they proliferate a nasty agenda in my dream i saw in particular jara pinkett and terence howard like guys i don't watch enough in like tv to be focused on terence howard or jada and what they're doing but god saw it fit to use terence howard and and jada pinkett 
so i don't know maybe it's because their history is such that when they were kids on the come up they were such good girls and boys they were so like above reproach they were just such excellent kids they had so many talents and they were busy honing in on all of them and gunning for their dreams that they essentially were supposed to be you know some of the best human beings on the earth later on but then they compromised and settled and in my dream i saw a very young version of terence howard like as in teenage age and a very young uh, version of jada pinkett right uh they were all a crew of friends i was a crew of friends with them we were friends all of us but i was what what, what i was when i was a kid right i told you guys that when i was a kid i was very shy i was quiet i was reserved i did not talk much um you know i, I would sometimes even get just teased uh for having halitosis uh, i didn't have halitosis but they would uh, accuse like basically say Garabo, you've got like a bad breath you might get a bad, bad breath if you don't start talking like you're too quiet type establishment thing yeah that was me as a child and i was like that in my dream i was very shy i was very quiet i was reserved i wasn't saying anything i the whole time and my crew of friends included it was basically a whole bunch of people that i saw in my dream uh, including jada pinkett and terence howard jada pinkett and terence howard okay were my friends they were like yeah like always hanging out we were all always hanging out but i was very shy and jada used to well, kept on like teasing me right uh and and talking sort of kind of like woo uh, what's wrong with you why are you so quiet like come on and they all made a joke out of me and at that stage i was who it is that i was as a kid always has have been as a child but remember i was shy so nobody really knew what i had going for myself because of the fact that Mengtulile, my shyness is what it is that caused a lot of uh, misunderstanding of my person the people did not really know what, what i had inside and to like today they would be shocked they would be surprised to find this out about me this person that i am now because i was so quiet and in my dream terence howard was a friend so too was jada and just like i used to get teased for being quiet and basically not having much to offer in the room they were mocking me they were mocking me both of them terence and jada were mocking me okay now terence howard from what i understand right he is very he's not just an actor he's extremely musically talented too he can sing and i believe he plays instruments right uh i'm not really sure which ones i only discovered this when i watched empire once upon a time and realized that terence howard could have gone both ways he could have become a musician if he wanted um or an actor but he chose acting i guess much like i guess tyrese figured that maybe there's just there's just more longevity in acting because you can do it for so long but so too can you also in music but the genre of music that you do can restrict you in terms of age like if you do rap at some point you gotta stop you know what i mean but if you do soul then i guess you can continue on and on and on on uh type establishment thing anyway whatever but here's jay-z still rapping at his like basically geriatric age but anyway whatever not everybody gets to be jay-z that's what i'm trying to explain uh to you guys yeah and in my dream jada pinkett and terence howard were busy teasing me right you know how handsome uh, terence howard is right him with those light eyes of his and uh just umuntle. he's just a very handsome man uh type establishment thing i developed a crush on on terence howard in my dream uh he was a teenager as was i in my dream just like jada was also a teenager as was i in my dream terence howard uh like i said musically talented right in and in, in, for real but he chose acting jada has always been acting type establishment thing but she was always hanging out around musicians and jada was i mean goodness a flame in her day you guys know or jada pinkett like y'all know that right and in my dream it was no different she was hugely sought after in my dream she was beautiful every girl was intimidated by her just as she is exactly that in uh was exactly that back in the day on the come up just an excruciating flame and the two of them it wasn't just the two of them but there were the celebrities that were highlighted in my dream right there were other people there that i did not know that i did not recognize that were hanging out in this crew of friends and i was the one person that was not talking very much i was very quiet in my dream and uh i developed like i said i developed a crush on terence howard in my dream but 
because of how shy I was and because of how popular he was, right? He was already very popular with the girls, the boys, everybody loved him. And I was the shy, quiet girl that ain't nobody even trying to look at me. And if anything, everybody is busy teasing me because I'm not talking. I'm just so quiet. I therefore had like a burning crush in my heart. Like I just had a crush on a guy that did not know that I could not tell that I would that, that, I, that I imagined I didn't even stand a chance with so it was just basically this like murderous crush it was just killing me inside by myself and I just like basically swallowed it whole and did nothing with it okay uh, burning low-key inside my heart over Terence Howard Jada was busy teasing me teasing me teasing me about my quiet disposition but not in a mean spirited fashion she was just playing around the way that kids play uh, and I was just like mm, chuckling there on some no guys leave me alone leave me alone whatever just chuckling just chuckling but low-key wishing that I wasn't as shy as I was okay next thing I go to a house all right like in this dream I go to a house where one of my former friends that put witchcraft on me a girl that I met at varsity okay she was in this house basically still doing exactly what it is that they she did to me uh, later on she was still messing with my life my future my prospects for marriage my everything she was typical having no idea that i have ha hang out like i'm friends with i chill with jada pinkett and terence howard they're my friends but this is jada in like before she even gets known for what it is that she is right she is yet to be jada that we know her in the entertainment industry she's still a kid so too is terence howard just some high school boy yeah i'm hanging out with them though these are like future prolific stars type establishment thing and this girl i go to a house where she's at and she treats me very typically in this dream like the way that my friends have treated me thus far like i'm no one like i'm nothing like i'm bewitchable like i'm just going to go and grab whatever talents you have and bury them in the ground on your behalf i'm just gonna go on right ahead and mess up with your life Garabo. and i will not care that you hang out with jada and that you hang out with terence who cares because nobody knows who jada is nobody knows who terence is just one really beautiful girl and one really handsome guy but they're just they're no one they're just like regular janes and regular joes uh however that are very cute and very popular yeah so i go to this house and this girl is still treating me like the way that people in my life are treating me today okay and after going there remember i was initially hanging out with terence howard and jada and some other people i go uh, telling myself uh, to this place to this friend as not saying anything sorry and this girl treats me right the exact same way that i'm currently being treated by pretty much everybody in my life and in so treating me like this i then return back to Terence and Jada and co sad I go back to these people sad all right on some I don't even say anything remember I'm shy I'm quiet and that's who it is that I am I just however am sad when I come back there is an obviousness about my sad disposition but I don't say anything Terence Howard then goes to where it is that I came from remember I had a crush on him right he goes to where it is that I came from and then he kills like as in murders like as in neutralizes my friend the my former friend that pulled a witchcraft stance on me that hurt me he goes there and he kills her uh, first of all like in the I did not see him go and where he went okay I did not see him go neither did I see where he went but I was given a vision within a dream to see where he went so i stayed back where we all were hanging out and then i got given a vision within a dream to see terence go after i came back without telling me to where my friend my former friend was at and when he went there even though i did not see him go there in my dream i understood that he went there and spoke to her and they argued over what in the under heaven it is that they did to me right they argued and then he made a decision to put a plastic bag on her face and suffocate her 
to death. He killed her. He killed her. Like, yeah, Terrence Howard killed that girl. When he came back to the camp where we all were hanging out, I was not sure that he had killed her, but I had a suspicion that he might have because he had blood on his hands, right? So in my dream, I was made to see him killing her, but at the same time when he came back, I didn't know that he killed her. It's weird like that. Like, dreams are strange in that way. Whoa, look at this, like, landing on my shirt. Anyway, whatever, it's cool. I'm gonna go take a shower after this. Mm. Uh, Terrence Howard went and murdered that chick and he murdered her because she was whatever under heaven it is that she was towards me okay and when he came back like I said remember I told you that I had a crush on him he never told me he never he, he, I don't know if he knew that I had a crush on him or whatever but he went out of his way with Terrence to basically slaughter somebody that he imagined I was too namby pamby to deal with but she needed to be dealt with uh, you know she was basically a bully and Ntai Yezang is giving a bad name I, I what I understood Terence Howard having done was basically the activity of because of you bad women better women think of us as black men like we're rubbish and so if at all we neutralize you there'll be less of a wicked opinion about us as black men. I understood that the reason why he killed my friend was because she was contributing to the decimation of their reputation as black men. But Terence Howard had not done anything in the run up to to basically disprove the narrative. He had not done anything to, to convince people of otherwise like the bad rap basically that black men have in the eyes of especially black women he as terence howard had not done anything to be different he had not done anything to make it better he had not displayed that it it gets like that they're not all like that due to the fact that remember i told you i had a crush on him in my dream but i did not know if he liked me back i was entirely and comprehensively in the dark as to whether or not feelings were reciprocated here and he saw it fit to keep me in the dark too and after i came back all sad and all like you know un unhappy from the activity of some friend of mine that bewitched the living daylights out of my future he made a decision to vigilantically take matters into his own hands without even telling me because he saw me coming back sad and he also was trying to disprove a narrative about black men being nasty or whatever right and he was like to this woman he argued with her first remember in the dream and i believe the argument was something along the lines of because of you we all look like monsters because of you we all look like monsters because of women like you that bewitch their friends out of futures out of prosperities because of you having reduced your own friend to basically a servant in her mother's house we as black men look really bad you could not have the back of your girl to a point where now she's crying on the rooftops about us being evil as black men it is your fault so you deserve to die and then he went on right ahead and murdered my former friend Terence Howard however had not done anything to prove differently to me or to anybody else right so what, what, what in the world was God showing me in in that dream with Terence Howard in particular I'll get to the Jeddah Pinkett part he was showing me that black men are, are low-key kind of hypocrites right uh like in the sense that you don't want the bad rap and you also kind of hate it when other women make it make it evident that you've always just been dropping the ball where women are concerned and so rather than blame yourselves and identify that you are the one that have gone wrong in certain respects alongside women have also gone wrong you as as men have also neglected to minimize the casualties on the ground that are committed against women who are hurt by other women you have just sat back and rather capitalized on the issue at hand and women don't even find out that you are in love with them or you have any feelings for them until you act a bizarre fool and do her a favor by killing something that's hurting her like in my dream i had a crush on terence howard do you understand and i did not know if he liked me back and because i was this quiet shy type i imagined that he wouldn't want me and i imagined that i was kind of ignorable by him until it became apparent that he was never ignoring me so much so was he hearing me that when i came back all saddened from some 
place where I was basically getting hurt by a friend, he took matters into his own hands, yelled at that friend, and then killed her. Like all the way to the point of violence. Do you understand? So there is a, a, an anger at witchy women by men. That's what I'm, I saw in my dream. There is the men are hypocritically angry at little devil worshiping women when in and of themselves, they basically leave a lot to be desired. Now, why was Terence Howard used in my dream? And even then in the capacity of a teenager, I believe God was showing me what is this that that very same thing that I'm, I'm talking about where it is that like I wanted kids right that were going to basically use their talents and be like their giftedness would get discovered soon early and so they would be these like stars in the making but I would do everything in my power to keep them responsible so that they don't mess with their futures type establishment thing yeah but then when they get taken over into the in the inter, into the entertainment industry they they destroy their souls they mess with their lives they they tarry from god and they pull all these different kinds of stunts so i believe terence howard was used because maybe the lord feels that way about him like he was destined for better for more and you know as a as a man and especially as a black man he was supposed to do better but he didn't and he did not do better especially against black women he did not love black women as he was supposed to even though he did love them he did not do what was needed and so now the collective of them are looking really bad because of their neglect and abandonment especially of black girls especially of black girls so likely just like basically men that were very talented who had a lot going for themselves that god wanted to use mightily that dropped the ball because of where they found themselves working the entertainment industry and now years down the line now that they're all older they wish they could turn back the hands of time and like terence howard end up uh back in the day as a kid and basically take for a wife the woman that he always that, that he basically had very strong feelings for when he was a kid but it did not work out that way because he ended up in the entertainment industry and therefore you know how these men especially black men when they go into the entertainment industry all of a sudden black girls are nothing to them all of a sudden black girls are not worthy unless they are bordering on being white unless they are super yellow unless they have got light eyes like terence howard unless they're half breeds half white half black or half white and half indian half whatever unless they don't look anything like their moms they don't look anything like their dads their sisters the chicks they grew up with in school the regular janes the regular joes that they hung out with unless they look like basically something that was born out of a pearl from the ocean they don't want them but then they wake up later on to realize that oh snap i actually still kind of like black girls or i can the the why the woman that i loved the most looked like carabo she was just a regular girl she was just a regular jane but i treated her like she was nothing because that's just a sad and disquieting thing about black girls that look like me do you understand we get mistreated and passed up by men and then late in life after they have basically thrown everything of themselves away they then want to come back not come back sorry they then have regrets about how it is that they did not love the women who loved them they have regrets about how it is that they did not love women that they knew loved them but for them it was like i am terence howard now I am Mr. ABC now. Like, I am sought after now. I am wanted by all different kinds of women. And so black men, what God was showing me with Terrence Howard is that black men, when they gain success, when they get big in whatever capacity, Terrence Howard is in the entertainment industry. But like the ones who even make it in corporate, like as CEOs, just big chunky businessmen, whatever. Yeah, as soon as they get into that arena, when they get their success and their prosperity the women that they loved a lot when they were kids that they frankly never really forgot about but who look really very regular they treat them like trash like just look at what what Dwayne wade did with his regular jane wife the the, the first wife not gabrielle union look at what he did and i believe the pressure with Dwayne wade came with the fact that he was now this nba star and he like it was imagined of him that the woman that was on his armpit was not like you know in his league it was not like the the right 
quality of women when they're not looking at quality based on what's going on in the heart of a woman but they're looking at quality as uh, like basically an outward uh, outward appearance like these celebrities hollywood stars and successful men other successful men in the world whether or not they're celebrities in the entertainment industry man oh man how they equate virtue with basically bright yellow skin or women that don't look black at all they, they're like almost white or whatever and these are men that have in their lives had very strong strong feelings for regular black girls regular black girls but they imagine that money has made it such that they now don't have to focus on that anymore or like that that essentially it is not worth their while to look at these women but then remember their hearts don't change it is the mindsets of the world around them that change their feelings for women or who it is that they prefer or what they want in a woman that does not really change what changes is world influence around them that keeps on telling them don't waste your time with this kind of girl and so therefore a lot of regular black girls regular black girls like me have been mistreated severely by men because of the fact that we are dark-skinned or we are just typically black like there's nothing extra special about us other than just being black girls and apparently that then also uh, you know discourages virtue from out of our bones it um it says that in so far as we look black we are typically black there's nothing of us mixed there's nothing in our bodies that suggests that our mother was puerto rican and our dad black we're just pure black that's it it is such women as these that get mistreated by black men and sometimes also the ones that they fell in love with hard and fast when they were kids women that they adored like every bone in their body they would have done anything for but then they made money they got wealthy they became essentially like kings on the earth and that money making caused them to mistreat such women so badly that these girls ended up kind of embittered right and then because black women are in the business of abandoning one another uh, i spoke about that yesterday do you understand uh at length uh they they uh, black chicks no yesterday or day before or whatever black chicks have this thing that they do where because of how severely mistreated and abandoned by their men they are they then mistreat and abandon each other it's like a coping strategy a coping mechanism of black girls in so far it's every man for himself so essentially the behavior of my friends the behavior of even that one that friend that bewitched the living delights out of me in my dream that mistreated me is a byproduct of black man's mistreatment they are like that so they don't come to the party they don't pull their weight they don't do what they ought and then when when women react by basically being uh what do you call this just these beastly uh what do you call this like uncaring and loving and feeling feisty like manifesting demons all up in everybody's grow these men then want to go and blame them because they do not want to be viewed in bad light by women that they love women that they loved that they however treat it like nothing's up here like the bit of, you know bit of a scum of the earth type setup thing like mistreating this lady chica because you think you can find your you know white looking black woman or your it's just full-on white woman in the entertainment industry you marry her and oh, not that there's anything wrong with marrying white women go on you know what i mean but don't marry white women just because they're white and you are a star on that day you are actually putting that white woman in misfortune because she wants love and not to be fetishized or to be used as a weapon against black women she just wants to be loved i don't know of any woman that does not want just basic love type thing but like when you you use white women against black women then on that day you are robbing white women and black women of affection you are robbing everybody of affection you are robbing everybody of affection because now you're competing women with each other type thing and there are black men who are waking up in marriages with women that were frankly number two in their hearts or three or four or five but who had a particular outward appearance and so because of how they look outwardly these men were like i'm going to be respected and regarded and heralded as a man if i will marry this woman and so they went on right ahead and grabbed for themselves a woman based on nothing but appearances at the expense of the woman that he truly does love and then when this woman is busy crying on the rooftops lamenting years later still in poverty suffering everybody treating her like trash because every man treats that kind of girl like trash yeah 
he's now feeling some kind of way because really and truly when a man loves a woman he will always feel like wanting to be a little bit of a rabobi a little bit of a spider-man superman rescuing the day no man wants to see a woman that he loves just moaning and groaning and wailing and complaining about how all men ain't jack when he was in a position to love her and so therefore her not necessarily not be endured through that level of rubbish and in my dream terence howard so i guess loved me right of course this is a dream let's just keep that out there that he after i lamented about mistreatment not i didn't lament i came back sad from somewhere where i was mistreated by a friend and he decided to go and kill that friend the way that he now was overkilling he got to a point where he had ignored his affections for me so much that in order for me to see that not all of these guys are nasty little doggy dogs in a pound uh that he can like he went to a point of murder like he killed her like he properly killed that friend of mine like overkill basically like his reaction was an overkill first he argued with her and then he murdered her he put a plastic bag around her face and murdered her that's what terence howard done did to a woman that was mistreating a woman that he did not even tell that he loved her this chick liked him he would never under heaven allow himself to confess that he liked her back because she looked a particular way she looked like me and uh, uh, me no how that back in the day was very shy i was uh, the shy the quiet shy type uh back in the day i was extremely reserved um you know i've always been that way i already communicated that and because he did not want being the mr popular that he was because he did not want being to be basically the guy dating the shy girl that nobody talks to that can't talk to anybody because she's just so shy while he is the star in the making yeah he rather than confess that look i really like this girl he instead acted kind of passive aggressively towards her do you understand um and then went and murdered on her behalf when she was sad so instead of telling her you love her telling her that you will take care of her and so therefore not even sub not, not even allowing her putting her in out of harm's way to a point where she would get afflicted by a bad friend instead of doing a better thing as a man in that regard you then go and kill to prove that you're a man and that not all black men are nasties and in the dream he still never pursued me he never did anything to suggest that i like you he just went and killed someone that made me sad he killed someone that made me sad so what i believe god is showing me in that dream was that they get to appoint these men who once they have gone and succeeded done whatever they wanted to do they then realize that uh life is more than just money life is more than just flash and pizzazz life is companionship life is relationships and when then they miss women that they've always loved they then end up acting like brave little neanderthals who will murder when their camps are being raided by threats so given that these women would have been the tenement of their wives they then act like neanderthals who upon being threatened in their camps would kill whatever threat is coming at their wives to preserve their wives but they're not their wives and also it's not the days of the neanderthals so you don't just get to go murder the women that hurt this woman you don't just kill dude like what are you doing like you don't just go and do a death spell you don't display that you can be a man after failing to be a man by killing whatever it is that was the threat around the woman you love yeah you don't go back years down the line after passing up on the one literally the one okay and then kill everything that has ever broken her heart because now all of a sudden you don't want that woman looking at you like you stank that i believe was what god was showing me like the fact that terence howard went and killed some friend of mine from back in the day that put witchcraft on me was just god showing me the reaction by black men after messing up once they make money once they go out there in the future and successfully get what they want and then go and marry njefela some girl because she's got like green eyes and hurt the woman that you've always loved when all that comes like flying kicking you 
because you want love now you want companionship you want somebody with whom you basically get along or you both gel and juice so i am quite musically talented right um but i can't play instruments or whatever and terence howard his gifting i guess in waking life is similar to what i have going down for myself right so i guess what god was also likely showing with that is compatibility like women with whom they are very compatible like in every regard like they are both let's say musically talented they could do a ballad together killing it kicking it and body bagging it okay yeah they could together the two of them be basically an artist pair all right but she's not pretty enough or at least according to the standards of this world and she is also not cloudy enough and she's not getting enough hollywood executives knocking on her door so uh, whatever no but when you can make good music with a woman when you can basically be the star that you are with a woman the two of y'all just kick it and kill it you know you're playing the guitar she's singing or whatever when you are that pairing with a woman you are highly unlikely going to find that ever again you are highly unlikely going to discover that again. So what Terence Howard was, was basically a man with whom in my dream, we were musically aligned. We were, um, what is this? Never mind musically, but also um, theatrically aligned, like similar personalities. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And yet he went on right ahead and chose somebody else type establishment thing. So maybe God used Terence Howard for those reasons, men who don't marry the right women based on how compatible they are with them and they are black black men who don't marry the right women and who marry women just based on what they imagine society is going to be happy is on their arms they just go for the prettiest non-black girls like really exotic looking brazilian dames or portuguese latina dames whatever right i ain't hating on these women not not, not even in the side in the slightest they in and of themselves are also misfortunate uh, misfortuned unfortunate whatever even is the word over there by these men because really frankly everybody needs love everybody needs love and if at all a man is snatching you up because you've got those light eyes and you look basically not black yeah and that's the only reason he's marrying you he is not marrying you because he actually truly is compatible with you and everything about you guys is like working together like proper swimmingly are you rolling these streets if if that's if that's not the reason you are marrying a woman then you are putting yourself in a position to later on wake up and realize that it would have been much better for you to marry a woman that you adored that you got along with that you have similar interests to even though she is not a typical flaming beauty uh, uh, like like that which men in the entertainment industry insist on putting rings on the fingers of tyrese is another one that found himself in that position uh if you look at the marriage i got denzel washington he's married to a regular jane do you understand samuel l jackson too regular jane and they're still married to this day snoop dogg regular jane uh ti regular jane like men who married regular jane women and did not allow the entertainment industry to basically take them off with the tsunami of insisting on marrying basically you know either white looking black women or white women or anything other than black girls like just a very exotic beauty which really truly everybody needs love including the exotic beauties uh but like when that's the only reason you're making a decision for marriage when that's the only reason you're making a decision for marriage on that day you're gonna find yourself missing your plain girl that you got along with nonetheless your plain jane that you were absolutely hand to glove mixed with and god used terence howard in my dream i do not know why i don't even know who terence howard is married to right um i i don't follow him that closely but one thing that was true in the dream is that he acted like a superman in my dream do you understand superman super superman when i was in distress but it was like he <laughs> like he was a teenager so was i right but i was shy i was quiet and nobody was looking at me but everybody was looking at him and he was like i said a superman when i was a damsel in distress but superman that came a good 20 years too late superman that rocked up to, re to rescue lois after realizing that it's always been lois and that he's clark but like first he married louisa instead of lois and now he wants to come back to louisa because it's always been louisa they wake up at some point these men especially like black men they get successful and then they underestimate black girls and in so underestimating us hurt us 
and in so hurting us hurting us then cause us to be so embittered that we now think all black men are trashy doggy dogs and when then the women that they love feel that way about them who upon being like absolutely and excruciatingly abused by the whole planet then only they overkill to show that they can do better and in my dream Terence Howard done gone right ahead and killed a woman that was hurting me overkill that was an overkill reaction if he had just loved me in the first place properly without compromise there would not have needed to be you know the altercation that he would later encounter with the woman that was treating me badly they're trying to make it look like women are the ones and i've spoken about this before that are the root cause of women abandonment that women are the root cause for women mistreatment women sorrow woman issue someness but at the end of the day jesus gave a responsibility for taking care of everybody men women and children alike to men they're the patriarchy they are the leaders they're the ones that are supposed to rule and reign they're those guys and so when these okies that are men don't do that goodness gracious when societies fall apart guys you did it it's not the women when women suddenly become immoral do you understand mm. when women become immoral you largely are to blame because women don't usually just kind of start off immoral they're very heavily influenced by men they are influenced in their behavior they are reactionary that way to men so when what men do what men commence what men start in these streets like hugely influences how women react goodness gracious give me lighting i cannot be using my finger right now because it is so grimy with product yeah no guys um so terence howard's reaction was literally too late in my dream and not only was it too late it was also an overkill because frankly the death of a female afflictor of my person was not necessary given that her strange behavior likely com likely commenced precisely because of her observation of the fact that ain't no man here to protect me nobody is here to stand by me women act a butch fool against each other do you understand because of men like i cannot say that enough like men influence how women treat each other and how women respond to one another and because black men are happy to proliferate female kingy fellow female hatred they're happy to keep women hating each other women are now bashing each other's heads into walls do you understand because lama totalawa appeared to be proud of the discord in the female community i cannot say that enough Wait a second, you're my thing. Now I did bring paper towels. I can't believe I get the abuser. How about Toko Hagan with these grimy hands when I want to stop recording and move to the next part? Give it a little fits. I got speed to this upper part. As you can see, I've been ripping my hair out um, with this comb, but I'm like no longer going to be doing these hairstyles that stay on my head for long. So it's the last time I'm hurting my 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 strands. But I mean, look at my hair; it's growing, isn't it? Yeah, lovely.